Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. We're so excited to have you for this discussion. I'm your host, Diana Fosco, Division Vice President of Sales for Spectrum Reach. And I'd like to welcome you to The Perfect Marketing Storm, Tactics to Help Your Business Thrive in a Downturn. Over the next 45 minutes, we're going to arm you with some important information that we know will help you make informed decisions for your local business through the downturn and as we come out of this. Our presenter, Gordon Burrell, has insights that are driven by research and history that can be applied in today's current climate. Also, be sure to stick around at the end of the webinar for an interactive Q&A and for more details on the free resources and special offers available to help your local business. I'm so proud of the work Spectrum Reach has been doing over the past 45 days. These webinars included to make sure our local business partners are set up to successfully navigate these challenging times with innovative advertising solutions. On the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see links to our free video offer, as well as a link to our TV self-provisioning advertising platform. Feel free to check those out as there are some valuable resources for your business. Before I pass to Gordon, I wanna cover a few housekeeping items to make your experience better. At the bottom of your screen are multiple application widgets you can use to follow Spectrum Reach for more insights. All the widgets are resizable and movable, so feel free to move them around to get the most out of your desktop, excuse me, desktop space. You can expand your slide area or maximize it to full screen by clicking on the arrows in the top right-hand corner. If you have questions during the webcast, you can submit them through the Q&A box below the slideshow. We will do our best to answer as many of your questions as possible at the end of the presentation. Um, but we're also going to capture all of them and we will follow up via email if we miss them. A copy of today's slide deck and additional help materials are available in the resource list. We encourage you to download any resources or links that you might find useful. An on-demand version of the webcast will be available approximately one day after the webcast and can be accessed using the same audience link that was sent to you earlier. At the end of today's session, we'll have a survey for you to complete as a way to provide feedback to our team to help shape the content for future webinars. Your feedback would be greatly appreciated. Before we get started, let's take a poll of our attendees to find out what most of you are thinking. What are your plans for advertising and marketing your business over the next six months? Will you increase your spend, decrease your spend, keep it the same, or you just don't know at this point? We'll review the results a little bit later, and we're gonna give you about 10 seconds to go ahead and record those. All right, Gordon Burrell is a sought after speaker for conferences and company meetings, and is the local media industry's leading analyst. He is ranked in the top 2% among Gerson Lerman Group's 150,000 consultants worldwide and is quoted frequently in the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, Ad Age, Forbes, and other publications. He's appeared on CNN and other TV and radio programs discussing trends and forecasts for local media. Prior to starting Burrell Associates, Gordon was vice president of new media for Landmark Communications, where he worked for 22 years. Please welcome Gordon Burrell. Gordon? Thank you, Diana. Thank you, everybody. Thank you uh, for showing up for this. You are the, I want to say the lucky ones, you're the smart ones for, for being here. And the reason that I say that is we find a lot of people right now paralyzed. It's easy to be paralyzed, isn't it? Because there's just so much going on. Uh, I, I try not to look at the news every night um, because it just, it's confusing. It causes paralysis. It causes you to just worry and wring your hands. So you are taking action action by being here and actively thinking about your marketing. And I don't want to under, underestimate that or tell you that it doesn't mean anything. It means a lot because there is a very, a very big opportunity here in front of you. What I want to tell you about is this perfect storm that was created prior to this moment. And so we see a lot of things have, have come together just before March got kicked off. And I'm going to tell you about that, but I also want to tell you that 
we have been here before. This is, it certainly feels unique to me. I'm 63 and I've been through a lot of stuff, but I've never been through anything like this. And I'm sure you feel the same way. But we have been here before, at least from, say, a marketing perspective. If you look at prior economic downturns, back 100 years ago during the Great Depression and during the downturn in the early 70s and then in the 80s and 90s and then into 2008 with the Great Recession, what you're seeing is we have kind of a, a, a turn here in the economy that mimics others probably close to the Great Recession in 2008. Now, I'm not an economic forecaster. This uh, dotted line comes from the International Monetary Fund, and their forecast is that the GDP will decline by this amount uh, over the next 12 months. So if it mimics the Great Recession, and this is the worst news that you're going to get in this whole thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, this is going to last a while. This isn't going to just bounce back and everything's going to be great by midsummer. Uh, not going to be that way. But it is a good opportunity for you to take a lesson from these previous economic downturns. Like I said, I know when there's a crisis, what happens is that we all follow consumer sentiment and consumer confidence declines during any type of recession. If you ride that line down, yeah, you'll be in the depths of things. You'll be paralyzed and you won't want to market and advertise. You want to cut expenses. You want to be conservative. But if you understand this one basic thing that during every economic downturn, consumer spending continues it doesn't actually decline. People still eat. They still go places. They still do things. Certain things decline, and there's a natural kind of a shakeout of the economy. But if you look back for marketing examples of businesses that understood this trend and acted during a, a depression or a recession, what you see is 100 years ago, the famous story of post cereal. Everybody was eating post toasties back then. And it was a great time. It was the roaring 20s. And then the depression hit and posted the predictable thing. They cut back on all their expenses. They stopped their advertising. And this small company called Kellogg's decided everybody needs to know about Rice Krispies. And suddenly people didn't stop eating cereal during the Great Depression. It wasn't like, oh, we better stop eating cereal. They kept eating cereal, but they started hearing about this new cereal called Rice Krispies. And they began having that instead of post toasties. What a great example. Kellogg's increased its profits 30%. It doubled and tripled and quadrupled its market share, and it became, in very short order, about three or four years, what it is today, market leader in cereal. That is a great and often cited example. But there are other examples as well. During the Depression, Disney launched. Uh, so it's not like, okay, during a Great Depression, during a recession, we should hold back. Disney launched, knew that people really needed entertainment, really needed a diversion, and look where they are today. During the 73 to 76 recession, you had FedEx and Microsoft launch during those periods, new and very different products that took advantage of what happens in trends as things move along very, very slowly. And then an economic trigger occurs and trends accelerate. Meanwhile, people are kind of paralyzed when other people can ride that trend, and Microsoft and FedEx certainly did. During the, the last, the, the Great Recession, there were great brands that were launched. We're, we're, calling, we're, we're talking about Credit Karma, uh, Venmo, Groupon. Remember Groupon? They're still out there. Uh, Instagram and Uber. So you're going to see a lot of brands launched at this period and really excel. And if you get down to the local level, what it means is you probably have a brand that will excel as well. You don't need to launch it during this period, but you can excel because as your competitors retrench, the lesson is you can steal their market share. There may not be as much being spent in one particular thing that you have, but if you have a five or 10 or 2% market share, you can certainly expand it at the expense of your competitors. So that's the story of how we've actually been here before. What I wanna do is go back and say, okay, let's look You know, 100 years ago, this famous quote from John Wanamaker, half my, the money I spent on advertising is wasted and the trouble is I don't know which half. Well. 
it still holds true today. You might think because of all the measurement of media out there, because of all the clicks that you can measure and the website visits and the search engine terms, things like that, everything has made advertising more measurable and more accountable. Not true. Our surveys show that half of all local businesses, local advertisers still are confused with their, with their advertising and whether it actually works. They agree with Wanamaker's lament. So coming into this particular time, at the end of December and into January, before we even knew what coronavirus was, the perfect storm had been forming. Number one, advertisers really still were kind of confused as to whether their advertising really worked. We also asked, as you were asked just a few minutes ago, are you spending or, uh, the right amount of money? You were asked how much you're spending. I'll get to that in a moment. But we asked the advertisers, are you spending the right amount of money? And more than half of advertisers said, I think we're overspending. I think we're underspending, or I don't know. And this has grown over the past couple of years. So you've got 58% of advertisers not knowing whether they're spending the right amount of money. If I asked you, what you're spending and how you determined what you're going to spend this year prior to all of this happening, what would you tell me? Is it a percentage of what you spent an incremental blast from last year? Well, how did you determine what you spent last year? It was probably an incremental amount from the year before. Are you spending the right amount? So advertisers have become confused about, this is a phenomenal number, 58%. We've seen this grown over the past couple of years. This is part of the storm that's forming. They're confused about whether they're spending the right amount. Some think they're overspending, some think they're underspending. Another really, really interesting thing happened, and that is more and more of them have begun, and I bet you're like this, have begun taking a lot of marketing tasks on your own. Why? Because you can. You have marketing tools available to you. So suddenly you've got Facebook and you've got Instagram and you've got Twitter and you can shoot your own videos. You can post them up to YouTube. You've got your own website and you've got a tech person that's got some design skills and they all feel like marketing, right? So we found that more and more businesses have taken on marketing, particularly social media. This is a phenomenal statistic. 80% of businesses use social media as a marketing tool. That's more than any other medium. We've never seen 80% of businesses using, say, television advertising or radio advertising or newspaper advertising. It's been a huge, huge attraction to businesses to go to social media and market themselves. And it's a great marketing tool. It really, really is. But what we found is that it's almost an addiction. It's become, for a lot of small businesses, their only marketing tool. And that's really, really dangerous. If you're only using one medium, whether it's direct mail or outdoor or television advertising, if you're only using one or really, really relying very heavily on one, that's not a good thing. And we found that a lot of businesses just migrated to social media, which becomes an echo chamber. An echo chamber is where you have basically the same customers that you market to again and again and again. So you're not really growing your business. You're just market. It's like using your same customer email list and marketing to them every special that you have, eventually that list will decline unless you find a way to replenish it. So these are the things that were happening. And, uh, social media is a great, great marketing tool, but an over-reliance on it is what we're concerned about as we saw this occurring. The other thing was that we asked businesses, we run the largest survey of local advertisers in the country. We run a poll of advertisers. You'll see resources on your screen there. If you want to join our panel, we have a great panel that we conduct every Every month and you get some great information on what other marketers are thinking just like you uh, please uh, join that if you can we're recruiting all the time but in one of those panels we said okay tell us if you are doing social media management if you're handling email marketing internally if you're developing and designing your own website if you're doing SEO if you're doing reputation management and then when People told us they were doing those things. We said, okay, how much do you spend on that? What of that is out, outside resources, contractors? And what of it is hand, how much of it is handled internally by your own employees? So they've got secretaries handling posts on Facebook and uh, a sales rep may be shooting a video because he's got a great iPhone and they post it up to YouTube. So there's a lot of internal expenses. And then we calculated based on what they told us how much time they were spending and how much the employees were making uh, hourly. Then we calculated how much they were spending. 
So we came up with this. For most businesses, it's between $15,000 and almost $30,000 a year on each of these, on each. So when we came back and we said, okay, you told us you were doing this, 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 and this, your total internal expense was, on it's, this is what it is on average for small businesses, $120,000. Every single one of the responses said, oh my God, I didn't realize we were spending that much money. So. And I guarantee you, if you began to calculate all the expenses, internal expenses you have in internal marketing, if you're a local business and handling some marketing internally and some externally, you added it all up, it would be a large amount of money. So this is the setup for the storm. We had businesses unsure about what they're spending, unsure of the efficacy of their own advertising, you know, which half worked and which didn't spending a whole bunch in social media, which again becomes a bit of an echo chamber for folks, retrenching a bit from traditional forms of mass media, which reaches customers they don't even know about, but they're just not using it much anymore. And then this happened. Everything was going along just fine. And the amount of businesses saying the environment was good increased from December two years ago until December of 2019. And then all of a sudden, the lightning bolt hits. That is the perfect storm. So you have all of these businesses that are really not all that sure about their marketing efforts, but hell, everything is great. So we're doing fine. Yeah, sure. Keep posting on Instagram. Let's try that TikTok stuff and let's do this. Let's do that. Experimentation is great, but all of a sudden they really can't afford to experiment. So what do they do? What do most of them do when a crisis occurs? Well, <laughs> When a crisis occurs, you do what Post did, right? You uh, hold back, you retrench, you be conservative. You lose your voice in the marketplace. And that is the exact wrong thing to do. The exact right thing to do is if you want to steal market share from all those folks, your competitors who aren't on this call listening to this message, is get out there and make a voice for yourself, make a name for yourself, tell people you're there. I'm going to talk with you about the messaging that you might want to be thinking about over the next couple of weeks and couple of months. I'm going to talk with you about what consumers really want you to say, and it, it's changing very, very quickly. You'll see this in, the, in a moment. It's really, really fascinating. But before I do that, I want to tell you what is happening during the crisis and how this has set up this wonderful little bubble that you can take advantage of. During times of crisis, according to Nielsen, when people have to stay home because of a tornado or a hurricane or a flood or something like that, media usage increases vastly, about 60%. And we can see it here that accessing local news, think of your own information habits. We all just kind of need to know more. And hell, we're sitting at home, so we want to binge watch stuff, right? Uh, but we're looking up more local news to the tune of about 54%, looking up more about health issues, about 43% increase in that. Uh, a 40% increase in information about food, what's available, or cooking, or things like that. So all of this media usage has increased. And then we have this other interesting thing that 21% of people, one in five, are starting a new hobby. That's kind of interesting, which tells me, and should tell you too, that people are thinking about things differently. Maybe we should do this, maybe should we should do that. What we're seeing now is the emergence of new brands and people who have been silent for a while or creating businesses jumping out there and taking advantage of this vast expansion of media usage right now. The other thing that is happening while media is expanding and more people have eyes and ears on different forms of media is this, and that is 54% of businesses plan to maintain or increase their spending. Wow, that's interesting. 40% are spending less or have stopped spending altogether. So this refers to the question that was asked just before I began. We asked, you know, what you were planning to do. And I think you're going to find your, your results are pretty interesting. Very, very interesting in correlation to this. I've put a little star next to that 18% uh, spending more because during COVID-19, and this survey was taken two weeks ago, during this 
horrible time when everybody seems to be retrenching, 18% of these businesses were spending more. Who were they? Well, we found out they weren't specific types of businesses like restaurants or hospitals or you know who you might think. Uh, there wasn't any pattern there, but there was a pattern in one thing, and that was the level of experience, which we gauge for everybody who responds to our surveys. The level of experience of that 18% spending more in marketing was far more than anybody else. These are the master marketers. What is the secret? What do they know? Well, they know that story about Kellogg that I told you. They also know the story of GM during 9-11 when the world was paralyzed, watching the Twin Towers fall on that video loop again and again and again. We're all just kind of stuck watching that, right? GM got busy. They created this Keep America Rolling campaign. They took a little hit because everybody thought, well, oh, this is not good to take advantage you know, during this time. They sold one million new units within three months' time. Every car manufacturer has followed suit with that. That story has been pretty famous, what GM did during that period. They're doing it right now. These are the master marketers. These are the types of things they doing, are doing, and this is what they know. This is what happens during a crisis. We made this green. I should have made it yellow because we could do the analogy of uh, lemonade from lemons, right? But limeade, I guess. During a crisis, what you see is a swelling of the audience, 60% increase in media usage, so more listeners, viewers, readers, etc. less ad clutter, up to 40% reduction in ad buying. And there you have it. There is the opportunity. While the rest of your competitors are silent, this is a great opportunity to jump in. This is where we think we are during this crisis. We are kind of at the tail end of it here. That opportunity is closing pretty quickly. I don't want you to think that, oh, when it ends, it's over. There are some interesting things to think about as we look forward into the latter months of July, August, September, and October. But let me get to that in a moment and talk first about the wisdom of the crowds and when your peers those uh, other businesses out there think this will end. We asked them, what is the impact of uh, this particular crisis and how long will it last on your business? Will it last a month and everything bounces back? Will it be a year or two or three? Well, here's what we found. It changed over time. We asked the question in mid-March and it seemed to be that in mid-March, think of your mindset back then, it would be one to four months, maybe. That's what a lot of people were saying. We asked it again in the latter part of April, and we found that 60% of them now feel the impact will be three to six months. That is, that it's going to take three to six months for these businesses to get back on their feet. Let me tell you, that is for the businesses that will survive, the businesses that are actively thinking about their marketing, which many of these panelists actually are, as opposed to those who are just thinking, my business won't survive. It's going to have a, a, a lasting impact. It's going to be a, a long period. It's kind of like a marathon sprint. You're going to have to think of a long-term marketing plan, and it's going to have to change week to week, week to week. So what we see is three phases. We are on the tail end of this opportunity, as we mentioned, the, uh, the Lime chart, the Limeade chart. And phase one is where everybody is saying, wow, you know, OK, let's start thinking about advertising. Or those few, hopefully you on this call, are advertising right now and gaining a voice before that clutter begins again. And the media usage begins to decline. We've already seen that. There's binge watching fatigue. I'm sure you've, you've suffered it as well. Every, weather's getting warmer. Everybody wants to get outside. So we're going to get back to normalized patterns of media usage. They'll be just a little bit higher, we think, because there'll still be a, a need for information. But that will decline, and then more will enter, more advertisers will enter the market. So during these three phases, what we think is they're going to be specific messages that consumers will want from you. So let's take a look at what those are. These are what consumers want ads to say. And this was taken a few weeks ago, and I'll let you know that this is changing very rapidly. This is still somewhat current today. So what you'll see here is that people want you to Talk about service adjustments, you know, whether you're available and what's available, whether your store is opening. Uh, they want you to indicate what you're doing to help. 
and this is again what consumers want in their advertising. They want to know, they want you to explain actions to protect employees and to keep the business clean. So it's, go down the line and look at the different things on there and look at empathizing. You know, if you think about the messages that are out there today, uh, there's just this contrived feeling to messages that we're beginning to feel about in these unprecedented times. And we're in this together. They were good about two or three weeks ago, but the messages are changing. Now it's only you know, about 10%. And I want you to look at this in three different ways, because we're going to see these change over the next couple of weeks and months. Number one is we're open. This is what consumers want you to say. Number two is we're comp compliant. We're COVID-19 compliant. That's going to be important to people. But we want you to pay attention to this one down here at the bottom, deals. Only 8% of consumers said this is what they want to hear from businesses. This was taken a couple of weeks ago. This is going to change. So what I want you to do is be very, very careful. A lot of the messages out there seem to have been developed four, five, six weeks ago and now put into the marketplace now. The consumers are actually pretty savvy. Uh, they just, you know, if you're sending out messages that have COVID-19 in the subject line, emails, you are behind the times. How many of those have you gotten? And are you really going to apply, uh, going to reply to a long email from some CEO that talks about all the great things that they're trying to do to keep you safe? So it's, different at the local level. Consumers are going to really want you to respond and give you some great information in your ads. I think it was Adolf Ox, who is the publisher of the New York Times uh, back about 60, 70 years ago, said, all advertising is news. If it isn't news, it's worthless. So think about that. What type of news, what type of really good, strong information can you put in your ads in the ensuing months? And what do consumers want? The three phases we think are late spring, midsummer, and autumn, where the messages right now, 85% of the messages are going to be, we're open for business. That's what consumers are going to want to know. Are you open? What are your hours? Are you fully open? Are you still doing curbside delivery? Can you come out, make an appointment, and, and take a look at my plumbing or my HVAC? Are you helping me sell homes? You know, what, what they need information on, on your appointment setting capabilities and whether you're actually open. They're also going to want to know whether it's safe. Are you open? And is it safe? 85% of the messages over the next couple of weeks are going to need to have that information in them to have, to have consumers respond. But look at that other category that we have, and that is, have we got a deal for you? Remember, it was about 8% consumers saying they want this particular message. We think as that green lime kind of gets smaller and smaller toward the end, and everybody is in the marketplace, all of your competitors with these messages, we're open for business and we're COVID-19 compliant. In a couple of weeks, they're going to feel like a message that starts out in these unprecedented times, we're here for you. They're going to be old. And what's going to take over pretty quickly, we believe, is the consumer saying, yeah, 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 what kind of deal do you have for me? It's going to take some type of great creativity, some type of fantastic deal to be able to attract advertisers or, or to attract consumers in all of this noise. So I know if you, many of you are still in states that have not fully opened, and you're going to have a difficult time trying to figure out, you know, if you're not open, exactly what type of deal you can offer. If you're still closed, can you offer some type of deal? This is the time to be active. This is a time to steal consumers away from your competitors. This is a time to get customer lists, tell people that when you are open, you're going to give them a special deal. If they sign up, that will begin to get you those customer lists. So take advantage of these phases and understand that if you can, if you can start right now, even if you're not open, by getting that contact list, reaching out to competitors, customers, and delivering products or services or information to them. So when you do open, they will solicit your business. Here's your goal. Your goal is when the doors are fully thrown open, 
your competitor. You know, when it says, hey, we're open for business and they open their doors, you want them to hear crickets because you have been really active over the past couple of weeks and you've stole all their business away. That's the opportunity and that's the window that's closing pretty fast on this. So I think as you look at this and you understand that you're looking very carefully at the marketplace and trying to understand where the messaging is going to head, I don't know whether there'll be a resurgence. I'm not here to tell you whether that will occur or not. I'm here to tell you that a lot of businesses are open. There's a lot of economic pressure. There's a lot of movement by the governors to open their states. All but three states are open now for golf. So that's okay. Uh, you can play tennis, but not doubles. Um, spas are open. Tattoo parlors are open in some states. Isn't it bizarre? So you're going to have to understand what your message is. There is no possible business that you can tell me that I've, I've come across just yet where there hasn't been some creative message that you can offer or deliver. We've seen it for people who are landscape of providers and they provide just landscape services and they say well what can we do we can't go out the business we can't go out the consumers they're home they're doing it themselves and we said well okay why don't you team up with someone who delivers mulch because there's a lot of mulch being delivered and plants and say hey if you buy these plants or you buy this mulch we'll deliver our landscape services for free or at a discounted rate we've even seen uh dry cleaners who seem to be dead in the water saying, oh, no, we're going to take some of this extra material and we're going to make face masks. So if you deliver something here, uh, you know, we and for us to do dry cleaning, we'll give you face masks. People, everybody has been looking for face masks, right? Um, there have been kennels that have said, OK, if you're not going on vacation and dropping your dog off, why don't you give your dog a vacation from you? Because they're sitting around the house all day watching you on your phone and watching you on your computer and you're taking the dog for a walk five times a day, it really needs a vacation from you. These levels of, of creativity are really fantastic and there are lots of them. I would encourage you strongly to look to a local media partner or an ad agency to help. Those of you who are handling a lot of task internally, that's great. And there's a lot that you can do, especially with marketing technology tools. But what we've discovered is that there are local businesses just like you, particularly media companies, particularly folks like Spectrum Reach. Uh, they took the care uh, to, to bring this information to you today. And as you do work with them, and I really strongly encourage you, remember this presentation is called The Perfect Marketing Storm. There is a storm out there, and you have just as much opportunity to screw things up as you do to get it right. So you got to be really, really careful. Ask people before you create a message to push out on social media, how does this look to you? Ask people before you create a graphic or a special offer, is this right? So you're going to really have to rely on people who know a lot about marketing. What we would tell you to expect from them is to be partners just not advertising vendors. Here's a here's a clue. So if one of them, from, say, a radio station uh, uh, comes to you and says, hey, we want to help you. Tell us all about your business and tell us about your specific marketing needs. We want to learn what they are. And then after 10 minutes of you sharing lots of information, what do you think their magic solution is going to be? It's going to be radio, right? That's not the right vendor. And it could be a television person saying, oh, this is great. I have the perfect solution for you. It's TV. I have the perfect solution for you. It's the newspaper or whatever they're selling at the time. Be very careful of that. What we want you to do is expect them to understand your business and to offer a variety of marketing opportunities. None of this is really done in the vacuum or in a silo with just social media or just television advertising or just OTT or just search engine optimization. It all works together fairly intricately. And what we're finding is a lot of these new media companies, not all of them, but a lot of them have broadened their, uh, their list of marketing uh, products that they can deliver to you. And they know how they all work together. You should expect that. You should expect a broad variety of what they can offer to you because they're going to offer you a marketing package that should work all together. A mix of social media, which tends to be very targeted and works extremely well for what it is, but also mass media that will reach out to that customer base that you don't even know exists or don't even know exactly where they are. 
and can bring them in and really magnify everything you're doing with your website, your search engine optimization, your social media posts, and things like that. That's really important. And I think they should all come equipped with new creative ideas. Ideas are really the new currency, and this is where we find most businesses really, really lacking. I can tell you that a lot of businesses are novice marketers, but a lot of businesses are also learning. And they're learning fairly quickly the, the difference between a good marketing message and a bad marketing message and how not to put so much information in a message, just you know, a singular offer and make it very clear. That's being learned. But what is really, really important, and it's going to be more important in the next couple of months, is creativity. There are a lot of old marketing ideas that are just going to sound old right now. But a level of creativity is going to be very, very important. You should expect marketing partners, media partners, to come equipped with two or three good ideas for you and say, okay, what, what do you got? You know, what kind of contests or promotions? The earlier chart where I showed you that deals and offers were going to be more and more a part of the marketing mix, that's some level of desperation by businesses to get attention. And it's not going to be just a two-for-one offer or a deeply discounted offer. We saw those during the last recession. During the last recession in 2008, 2009, Groupon was born. Do you remember Groupon? Groupon was a fantastic idea at the time, but for a lot of businesses that didn't really understand it, what happened was they were giving away a lot of services to existing customers. It's since been a bit refined, but there's going to be a resurgence of something similar to Groupon, but maybe a little bit better. And you want to be thinking of how to sync up with that. What are the great offers that you can have that will bring in new businesses, new, new customers, instead of just discounting your services to try to keep the old customer set? This is the level of creativity. This is a level of marketing expertise. I think you can really uh, uh, expect or really want to have in some type of marketing partner. I encourage you to go out and look for somebody in your local market. After all, their local business is just like you. They know your market very, very well, and they can really help you. I think what I'd hope with this presentation is to just give you an idea that this is really, really an exciting time. I just wanted to thank you for giving me the time to tell you about the marketing storm and how you can avoid being swept up by it. The coronavirus pandemic has stirred up an awful lot of fear. My hope is that you're armed with a new perspective now and knowledge about the marketing opportunity that's sitting right in front of you. If you channel any worries that you may have into action, I'm convinced you can turn this storm into the perfect opportunity. And I I think that one day you'll look back on this period, if you're able to do that, you'll look back on this period as the start of the roaring 20s for your business. So thank you very much. And thank you to Spectrum Reach for allowing me to tell you this story. And I hope it's been useful. Diane? Thanks, Gordon. Um, we'll get to Q&A in just a moment. As Gordon discussed, it's important uh, now more than ever to be sure your creative speaks to the needs of your customers. We know that local businesses are the lifeblood of our communities and helping local businesses is what we do at Spectrum Reach. As we already mentioned, Spectrum Reach is offering a free 30 second video to all of you with no strings attached. You can use this spot on your social media channels in your digital campaigns or any, anywhere you see fit. Uh, we're also offering 20% off all new television advertising orders if you need to, us to help you get the message out. For our existing clients, we're offering you a 20% bonus on any orders placed with us. You can find this offer on the right side of your screen in the resource list box, and both offers are available through the end of this month. So uh, before we kick off the q and I want to show you the poll results on your plans for advertising and marketing spend over the next six months. So let's pull that up. Uh, Gordon, any comments on these results? Yeah, um, it's, you know, I looked at it and I thought, wow, OK, uh, these are folks who have and I'm, I want to compliment you for being here. You've signed up because you're thinking the right thing. You're thinking, I really ought to be thinking about my marketing. I guarantee your competitors are saying, I, I, I'm not thinking about my marketing. So you have jived up almost perfectly, 18% planning to spend more. And by the way, about three or four weeks ago, that was 16%. So here come some of your competitors already. But what that tells me is on this call, 
And I'm going to compliment you again. Uh, those of you on, on the uh, on this presentation, um, you are really thinking about things the right way. Um, planning to spend the same 20%, that's a little bit low. So it worries me a bit that you have um, some still planning to spend less. I, I don't want to be too critical because a lot of you are going to say, yeah, but you really don't understand my business. And, and, I, and I don't. I don't I don't know who you are. But I kind of wonder why you're, you're planning to spend less. But congratulations to that 18% planning to spend more. I hope the 20%, Diane, planning to spend the same means they're planning to spend the same as they had budgeted for the year, mm -hmm. as opposed to, oh, we've been cutting back for the past three weeks, we're planning to spend the same. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hope they're gonna resume their spending on the budgeted amount. All right, thank you for that. So we uh, do have some questions and, uh, kind of putting you on the spot and looking for some ideas. Uh, this one, Gordon talked about the importance of changing your message. What's considered the appropriate tone that I should be using with my customers? Uh, they say they've seen hero messages, heartfelt messages. Specifically, uh, any ideas for an HVAC business? Um, yeah, I think you got to get down to business with an HVAC business. Uh, we've seen a lot of really good messages. Again, I think uh, the, the the ones that are were here for you are, are kind of getting worn out, um, and and they're just old messages. I think you really have to channel your customers. You really have to try to think of what your customers want to hear. And if someone's telling you that your customers want to hear a sappy message, you need to listen to someone else. Um, your customers want to hear, I need some HVAC work done. I need some you know, air conditioning work. We just got some actually uh, scheduled for this week. Um, and we responded to an ad that said they had a discount special offer. They're taking orders right now and we're COVID-19 compliant, we're clean or, or whatever. So. So think of it this way, like a real estate agent, okay? At any moment in time, maybe 2% of the population is thinking about buying or selling a home. HVAC, I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's also roughly 2%. While your competitors go silent, you want to go after that 2%. These people need HVAC work. Tell them you're there. Tell them you're open and give them an offer. I, it's just as simple as that. I, I think it's going to be important that you tell them that you're COVID-19 compliant, but I don't think there's a whole much, you know, a, whole, a lot more that you need to tell them and not a lot uh, of creativity that you need. You might need to say, what a great time. We're taking appointments now. Hurry before the rush. Something like that. Makes sense. Um, all right. Here's one. Uh, looks like it's for me. I run a small auto repair shop and my business is down because my customers are afraid to venture out to get cars fixed. What changes are you seeing out there with businesses like mine? Um, here, what I'm seeing is, first of all, you have to look at how you can be open, and that depends on where you are in the country, um, you know, state by state. But repair shops are doing pickup and delivery, touchless service, mobile service. I've seen, you know, even gift cards or prepay uh, with a discount for service later. So figure out, you know, let your let your customers know how you, you know, how they can support you at this time. They want you to be in business when this is all over. Um, I, I think Gordon talked, yeah, go ahead. I just, I, one other thought on that. Um, I walked into a guy, I, I noticed that I had five cars sitting in the driveway. My kids are home, which is why I love coming into the office because nobody else is here. Um, and there are five cars in the driveway. And I went to get my car inspected and I asked the guy who does work on my cars how things are going. He said, oh, not so well. And I said, what, are you kidding? Everybody's got their car home. What a great time for additional work. So he crafted the message. I actually helped them just for fun. <laughs> that said, you know, hey, business is slow for me. It was an email that went out. Um, if you have any work that needs to be done, I'm here. So it was a great opportunity. If you think differently, like I said a little bit earlier about HVAC, channel your customers. What are they thinking? You know, your customers, if you're a kennel, are not thinking about vacation, but they're thinking maybe their dog needs a grooming or a vacation from them. Uh, you know, uh, people at home are thinking, well, my car is here. And, you know, it's usually a pain to schedule a time in because I've got work. But the cars are sitting in the driveway. we got plenty of cars. Think about your customers and what they're thinking. Think about your own experience. It's a great time to do that. 
and to respond to the change in uh, in consumer behavior right now. Yeah, I'll just piggyback on that. We're seeing state tourism departments advertise, um, you know, kind of local travel. So piggybacking on that, we all need to get away a little bit. Perfect place to do that is in your car. Um, and I think finally, uh, just you just have to tell people, you know, uh, we've been talking about advertising during this time. You, you know, how are you getting your message out? Um, people are at home. They're consuming a lot of media. Uh, you know, you have an opportunity to talk to, to folks. All right. So um, last question. Will we get this webinar recording and can we get the presentation? Yes, of course. This recording is going to be emailed to you tomorrow. You can download the presentation from the resource list on the right. Um, and I think that's it. We're at time. So I am going to uh, just uh, say, you know, thank you for joining us. That's our program. Um, but be sure to join us in two weeks for another webinar on May 19th. And we're going to have national and local business insiders share insights to answer the big question, now what? I'm really excited about this one. And if you're interested in joining, hit the registration button in the resource list to the right. On behalf of Gordon, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today. Be on the lookout for the recording, check out all our resources and reach out if there's any questions or needs you may have that we can help you with. Please take a moment to fill out a survey. We would love to hear your thoughts on how today's session went and provide us with topics you wanna hear about. Thanks again for joining. Y'all take care, stay safe.